Today, Hillary Clinton revealing her official economic plan. You can't solve our problems without economic growth. Growth creates jobs and prosperity, and that is the glue that binds our society together. Okay, so, Stuart, you say there's a clear choice. Hillary Clinton wants to make us more like Europe. Donald Trump wants to make us uh, grow again. That's my opinion. With, with uh, all sorts of stuff. What's the matter with Europe? What's the matter with Europe? <laughs> What's the matter with Europe for the when, folks at home? You, I was you remember you're us. a refugee. <laughs> I am a refugee from European socialism. It's not a sustainable model. They're bankrupt. Many of those societies are bankrupt. They're super They've had in the no rim. growth, virtually no growth, for many, many years. Their population is actually declining and it's aging. That is not a sustainable economic model. It's just not. It might sound in terms of growth and expansion. Donald Trump would lower taxes for individuals and for corporations. He would cut regulation. He would encourage domestic energy expansion and output. That's a, that's a recipe for vigorous growth growth in the economy. And look, you know they're in decline. What people have, have what I've heard people say they like Donald Trump's plan because he takes it from four brackets to three brackets. Everyone gets gets benefits because everyone's going to have their taxes lowered. Trump wants to cut taxes for the super rich. Well, we're not going there, my friends. I'm telling you right now, we're going to write fairer rules for the middle class and we are going to raise taxes on the middle class. Trump wants to cut taxes for the super rich. Well, we're not going there, my friends. I'm telling you right now, we're going to write fairer rules for the middle class and we are going to raise taxes on the middle class. Gino is our guest uh, for just a, a segment or two. He, of course, uh, is a best-selling author. He was a special agent with the Secret Service. Before that, a New York cop. He ended up leading the foreign uh, details. He was a senior Secret Service agent. And obviously, he's never released any secrets about Obama or about the Clintons when, when she was in the State Department or anything else he saw. Uh, but he has been harassed uh, and had a lot of mysterious things happen. Uh, just for coming out and saying he politically opposes them. Now we have the emails uh, that came out over a month ago that show the Democratic Party has been directing the media on what to say and having people dress up like Bernie Sanders supporters to go attack Trump supporters. Now, we knew this from our sources. Now it's confirmed. I also wanted to talk to him. We're not going to play it. It went viral last week for the interest of time. He was on Don Lemon, and Lemon was saying, oh, this is so horrible. Trump, uh, you know, is out here calling for the assassination of Hillary. And then basically trying to shut off Bongino, who's trained to know what real threats are. And I want him to be able to elaborate and not be interrupted here, even though he did destroy Lemon. Uh, I'm not a rocket scientist or a criminologist, but I'll tell you this. Trump was spouting the standard from my cold, dead hands statement, uh, or what I said, 1776 commences again, that everyone says that when all else is lost, we have the Second Amendment. That's basically in the Declaration of Independence. Now, that's what I got from it. In fact, I thought it was milk toast compared to even stuff Reagan would say. He was just kind of like, well, if it's just the judges and they take it away, well, it's uh, nothing you can do unless, I guess, maybe the Second Amendment folks think they can do something. I mean, that was just kind of r relaying a cliche of the Second Amendment. And then I have the clips uh, where, again, I have all these media pundits and other people, including the vice president, saying, if Obama tries to take my guns, I got my Beretta and I know how to use it. He's going to have a problem. Now, for me, that was a clear threat. It was a clear joke. But he was saying to the colloquialism of the grassroots Democrats from my cold, dead hand. Uh, Mr. Bongino, is that an accurate statement, do you think? Yeah, I, I think what he was trying to do is get out the vote. I, I mean, I think he was clearly trying to marshal people who care about the right to self-protection, Alex. You know, that matters to them. He was clear. And, and, and Alex, let me just be clear on this from the start. But I'm not a Trump surrogate. I, I, I don't speak to him, the campaign. Um, I'm doing my own thing. I have my own campaign in Florida run. I, you know, 
I went on there to defend what I think is liberty and conservative values. You were a cruise guy. Uh, you were a cruise guy. I was a cruise guy. Exactly. No kidding. Like I was. A, that's the most amazing part of this whole thing. And I even said it in the interview. But, Alex, if, if we allow, this is why what happened with Don Lemon and Trump's comments, this is why this is so destructive and why in this election this matters so much. And I know you know this on your show specifically. Once we allow the left-leaning media, which is what most of them are, to paint conservative or liberty-based talk as inherently violent, what do you think the next step is, Alex? The next step is censorship. You can't allow this to happen. So I'm asking your listeners whether you support Trump, Cruz, Rubio, Ron Paul, Rand Paul, Joey Bag of Donuts, I don't care who you support. Do not allow them to do this, because once they do it, it's the next step towards suppression of free speech, with the le which the left has always... And as usual, you cut right to the heart. Uh, they're censoring in Europe. They're starting to censor here. They admit they want to censor us because they can't compete with our ideas. And you hit the nail on the head. They are wanting to say it's radical. They want to put out these law enforcement advisements. To, I mean, they even tried to ban in the Navy the Gadsden flag that was the first flag of the U.S. Navy. I mean, they mean business. Right, right they do. And I'm glad you pointed out the fact that, one, Trump never mentioned the word a uh, uh, gun when he was talking about to say he said the second amendment people i don't know that's his quote exactly almost verbatim i may have missed a, a, a two word or a three letter word in there whatever but he said second amendment people i don't know joe biden said oh he comes for my beretta and then mrs clinton i don't know if you remember this one alice in 2008 when she was running against barack obama and was getting her butt kicked and wouldn't get out of the race an editorial board said well you know why are you still in this race you're going to lose and she said, well, you know, Bobby Kennedy was assassinated in June. Wait, wait, wait what? Bobby Kennedy was a, did you just did she just imply that Barack Obama could potentially be assassinated? That's why she's in the race. As a and senior uh, former Secret Service agent trained in, in, I mean, like no one else on how to assess a real threat. To me, that was a very mafioso, sly way to directly threaten Obama at a time that we know they were at each other's throats. Well, I think what happens with politics is. We tend to, you know, you look at these things and you say, all right, they're running for office and people say all kinds of desperate things running for office. I think it was clear whether you, whether you, when you contextualize all these statements, they were imprudently worded and probably could have been worded better. But the question you opened up with the show with, which is the important one, is, was this a threat? The answer is, of course not. And what's sickening about this whole thing, Alex, is the left and the media knows it wasn't a threat. The only reason they're doing this is to influence elections and get the American people to think that any talk about liberty, any talk about illegal. conservatism, oh, about American values is inherently violent, and they're using it as a crutch to try and put a muzzle on conservatives. Exactly. In fact, I put together talk. a news piece that we aired yesterday where I pointed out just that, that when Heston said it was okay, when I said it, it was okay, when, when everybody else said it, and Ronald Reagan said it, and Ice-T said it, it was okay, but suddenly he, he puts out a mild, wimpy form of the statement, and then they act like it's the end of the world. That shows they're trying to change the Overton window to make that basically right. Uh, illegal. Right, and, and, and what they want to do also, yes, you're right. They want to frighten conservatives and libertarians and liberty-minded folks in the future from being able to discuss this issue either. You know, every time they do this, people say to themselves, in it, you know, whether advertently or inadvertently, they go, oh, gosh, if I bring up this Second Amendment thing, some media type going to say I'm calling for violence? You understand that this is what they want? This is the left, -wing's, the left wing media's goal, and it's always been their goal. Their goal is to stop you from being able to say things that are going to fight to advance the cause of liberty, and this is how they do it. I mean, I read his, his statement, Trump's statement in the Washington Post. I got the when CNN sent me the, uh, the request for a, an on-air hit. I had to read the article twice, Alex, to figure out what they were talking about. I, I'm not making this up. I read through it, and I'm like, I don't understand where the threat is here. I had to email him. I'm like, I don't, all right, I'll appear on the show, but I don't get it. Like, what's, That's what I'm saying. It's this new thing is. where you got George Soros and, and these big foundations openly sending out provocateurs that are saying kill cops and burn down cities, and that's okay, and then they're twisting something Trump's done. It shows a new level of deception. Right. You have BLM, the Black Lives Matter movement, calling for pigs in a blanket, fry them like bacon. And then what do we want dead cops? When do we want them now? Bang, bang, and bang. yet the left is worried that Donald Trump said, hey, you know, Second Amendment people, you know, I don't know. 
I mean, that's the quote. If you're listening at home going, I don't understand what Bongino... And obviously, obviously, that's what they should all be talking about with Rolling Stone, the New York Times, calling for banning guns, time to, quote, repeal the Second Amendment. They should be talking about what the repercussions are going to be. Because, I mean, even if you're a Democrat, you should be asking yourself that. Yeah, and, and the one thing I, I, I will give Trump, and again, I'm not a Trump surrogate. Yeah, I, you know, I appreciate that he tweeted some support. I, I could have used it after the Don Lemon uh, interview where the left was, uh, I mean, you should have seen the tweets I got. I'm sure you're used to them, but I'm not used to multiple, like, death threats in one night. One sure. or two, okay, but I got, you know, it was pretty nasty. Yeah, 150 a minute, not good. <laughs> oh, I mean, in my Twitter account, you know, just exploded, but I, I just need everybody to take away from this that this is a very coordinated effort by people on the left. You know what? What is it? Fred Siegel used to talk about in his book, Revolt Against the Mass, this iron triangle of the media, congressional committees, and left-wing activists, how left-wing activists push the media and congressional committees to advance issues. Make no mistake, that iron triangle is working together. Oh, right you can now. see it's a talking point across the board, and they are coming after our most basic of rights. In fact, because you mentioned it, let's play a clip of Heston and then dovetail it with... Uh, Joe Biden on the campaign trail, 2008, uh, basically saying, if Obama comes after my gun, I'm going to stand up to him. Here's a clip. From my cold, dead hands. I guarantee you, Barack Obama ain't taking my shotguns, so don't buy that malarkey. Don't buy that malarkey. They're going to they're gonna start peddling that to you. I got two. If he tries to fool my Beretta, he's got a problem. I like that little over and under. You know, I'm not bad with it. Can you imagine Mr. Bongino, Bongino.com, former uh, senior Secret Service agent who quit because he couldn't be part of what he saw? He's never told us what it is. I mean, uh, imagine if Trump would have made that Joe Biden statement. Alex, I hate to say it, but if you said that, you'd probably be in jail. I mean, seriously, if you were to use that exact Joe Biden quote and not change it a bit, you'd probably have, you, seriously, you would probably be in jail because I know how these, these things work behind the scenes, how they investigate these threat things. But again, because he's a liberal leftist, he's given a complete total pass because the implicit way to think, the way the media wants you to think is that the left is always innocent, they always have good intentions, and we should always defend them, and the right, everything they say is a call to violence, and you should have to defend why we shouldn't lock you up or investigate you. It's a complete paradigm shift, and it's very dangerous to the cause of liberty, and this is what really worries me about the future of the country. You know, we can have sound debates, Alex, reasonable debates about what the tax rate should be, import-export policy, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I always default to liberty in these things. But I understand how some liberals, maybe they feel otherwise. That's okay. What we can't have a debate about, what we can never have a debate about, is God-given, God-given, capital G-O-D, God-given rights to speech, assembly, religion. These are things Absolutely. that are not debatable. Dan yeah, Bongino, we've only got about debatable. five, six minutes left with you. I want to spend some time talking about what you're up to these days and where you see the campaign going in uh, 2016 and more. But, but shifting gears... I know a couple times because you've uh, called us or sent us an email asking, hey, did you say the other day that I was your source for something? Uh, we've never said you've been our source. Uh, you've only said on air the things you say. You've never released any info other than saying it's worse than what people are saying, and that's what other Secret Service agents have said here on this show. Uh, but we know what's going on with Hillary. Uh, we know she was in a hospital for almost a year and had brain surgeries. They've kept it secret, but they admit it. We know she's deteriorating. Uh, and I went to Cleveland. I don't want to get the Secret Service in trouble. I was blown away by it. So I've been to a lot of, you know, uh, major events over the years and uh, had a few federal marshals or Secret Service say hi or say they like the show. I mean, I, it was amazing. Uh, I, I mean, the crew witnessed it over and over again. The Secret Service, like, cheering us, and, and, and I don't want to say, you know, that's unprofessional, but that's what was going on. And then we had some Secret Service folks want to talk to us, and I passed it over to Biggs, and they said, well, just in about a month or so, you're going to get some info. Well, it came through the channels, non-digital, and it was just basically what you're saying about Hillary is true. We're really worried. We don't know how they think she's even going to make it. She's, she's basically uh, having seizures all the time. They've had to put in handicap stuff to get her in the cars. Uh, there's scuttlebutt about some big announcement. Now, obviously, this is the kind of stuff you can get people put in prison or killed. I, I just have a duty when real Secret Service agents, I mean, you're there in Cleveland. This is going on. Things are so bad behind the scenes uh, that, that we've gotten to this point. What do you make of all this? 
Yeah, by the way, that that uh, meltdown by the Young Turks guy was just classic. That's some <laughs> of the best video I've ever... I'm not kidding, man. I watched that thing three times. That was hysterical to watch these liberals lose their minds, you know? <laughs> so good job on that one. Well, what happened there was, you see, I mean, just briefly... The, their yeah. people set him up and told me to go up. He was okay with it at first. Then when he saw uh, uh, Roger Stone, that's when he blew up. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Um, no, and what, what, I, what I said, and I said this a while ago, and this clip went viral too, that it's worse than you know, talking about the Obama administration from the inside. You know, I meant it. And, and what I mean to say, and what, what I think your listeners need to take away from this is, I don't think even the hardcore conservatives and liberty-based folks who understand the gravity of the fight we're fighting understand really the level of rank incompetence going on in the White House. Now, I get it. Yeah. I'm not saying they don't know what they're doing in regards to you know, the implementation of Obamacare so it was designed to fail so that a third-party pay or government-run system. You're right. It was designed to fail. But what I'm saying is I don't think you understand the amateur hour nature of the administration and how they can't even keep control of just basic things. In other words, yes, your plan is always for bigger government and implement control. They've got a plan, but they're truly incompetent, which is frightening. Well, well let me explain right. on this. We're about to put people back in that stole the China that was George right. Washington's. I mean, right. Uh, right, Alex, this is important. They're so, they're so incompetent, amateur hour, that even though they're ideological hard leftists who are implementing the exact plan you guys saw with Obamacare and taxes and everything, you know, the war on cash and all this stuff, they're so ignorant to what's going on that they can't even implement their failures effectively. And, and, and is that why, why because, I mean, I'll tell you, sir, I'm shocked, and, and obviously this is dangerous. I don't like it, but I have a duty when it's real to report it. And it wasn't any secret stuff or any documents. It was just, hey, yeah, you're on target. Here's some info. What does it say about the incompetence inside the government at, at the White House level that the Secret Service is now at the point that they are so concerned about what's going on that information is being leaked? Yeah, I think a lot of people are upset. I mean, you saw the book, Gary Burns' book. Uh, you know, G Gary was, you know, I get it, Alex. I mean, I, it's not my thing to do these tell-all books. I, I, you know, I don't understand. It's not my bag of chips. But I understand why people are doing it. I mean, a lot of people are starting to speak out because this is the calculus they're making, Alex. They're saying, all right, I get it. There's just a certain oath to keep quiet in the Secret Service. But isn't there an oath to save the country first? I mean, you're a federal agent who swore to uphold the Constitution. Will you uphold that oath and, and, and get your kids killed? Exactly. There's got to be some point at which when you've got foreign actors, Chinese communists, admittedly, I mean, I've been told by former deputy directors of the CIA that Hillary is a Chinese spy. I mean, there's got to be some level where I'm asking myself, what do I do, Dan? Well, I don't know if, if, if she's a Chinese spy or not, but I can tell you this. I, I, I doubt it, but I know her emails. I know for a fact that her, her staff knew that that server had been hacked. I knew it. And, they, and whether she's doing it de facto and sharing information and didn't know or did know, either way, the gross, this is what I'm talking about, by the gross level of incompetence, they can't even implement a design failure. The White, House, the White House run Media Matters came out and attacked you when you were on six months ago and said the hack. When they knew it had been hacked, exactly. They don't even want to plug the hacks. They don't want Secret Service telling, you know, how evil Hillary is, but they don't care if every foreign government in the world can just jump on her server. No, and this is the crazy thing about that attack. Like, I'm, I'm telling you on your show that the person who told me this is an unimpeachable first-hand source who was there, was literally there, like physically at the scene when this happened. So it, you would think the left, Alex, to save the country would be like, oh, my gosh, we've had a major hack of the Secretary of State. This could be a big deal. We should try to fix this. No, their only concern is let's discredit the source. Who cares if they know about CIA operatives overseas, the Chinese or the Russians, and people get killed? I mean, we already saw the, uh, what was it, the uh, scientist who was killed. So, I mean, it's ridiculous. These people don't care about the country. We've only got two minutes policy. left. I know you've got to go. But 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 seriously, go back because I was interrupting. Uh, I mean, at the point where the Secret Service is was cheering me, I was almost embarrassed because... I mean, what does that say about the psychology in the government that they're so panicked that they're just happy to see little old Alex Jones as if there's some hope over there? I mean, that put responsibility on me that just blew my mind because if, let me tell you, if Alex Jones is like some big shot at the Secret Service, we're in deep crap. 
I think people are really upset within the government. I think they feel like there's a, there's an elite class of, of bourgeois insider government officials that live by a completely set of, different set of rules. I mean, whether it was the Kathleen Sebelius Hatch Act violation, Jim Clapper lying to Congress about spying on Americans, Hillary Clinton with the email server, and then you get rank-and-file men and women in the Secret Service, the FBI, and other government agencies that if they did the same thing would find themselves in bracelets and handcuffs. And they feel like, you know, what the heck is this? I mean, I didn't sign up for this junk. And I think that's why you're seeing this. That's why you're seeing this effect and people on the inside. Get you know you've been betrayed and you know you're fundamentally hated by a criminal culture. It's like they run the country. They run it all. And it's the old story, I'm going to let you go, of, of Ron Silver when the Clintons first got in, the Hollywood actor and producer. Uh, jets fly over and he goes, they're threatening us. That's how, and they go, no, those are our jets now. A lot of these people literally don't even get it. And I think that's why Hillary reportedly treats the Secret Service so bad. Uh, how, how did Obama treat the Secret Service that you can't say? No, I mean, listen, I never, he was always nice personally to me. I mean, but I always tell people none of that matters. I mean, I don't want to date the guy. You know, I, I want a guy who's going to be a, a liberty respecting, constitution loving uh, president. And, and he's not. I mean, none of that matters. They were all nice guys. I mean, you know, it, but none of that really matters. So what's it say about Hillary, Hillary then? What's it say about Hillary that universally people say she's super hateful? Yeah, I'm going to reserve comment on that one. That, that My comment is my reserving my comment on that one. All right. Well, thank you so yeah, much. I'm Give so us 60 so seconds fun. on what is going on in Bongino land right now and Bongino.com. Yeah, the race is looking great. So anything, you can, Alex, your audience is really passionate. I always appreciate whenever I come on your show, we always pick up a lot of Twitter followers and a lot of donations. So I appreciate it. I'm well, sure even Twitter. mainstream media is and, saying you're probably going to win this one. How do we make sure that happens? Tell folks briefly about the race. Yeah, yeah it's uh, Florida 19, the congressional district, Naples, Fort Myers, Lee, Collier County, uh, those two areas there. So if you live down there, make sure you vote. And if you want to help us out, it's uh, B O N G I N O dot com. I'd really appreciate it. Your audience is pretty passionate. So. And folks can follow that. you on Twitter as well. Uh, thank you so much for spending time with us and, and for speaking to us. Yeah, man, you got it. Talk to you soon. All right, there he goes. And again, you heard me bring up the Secret Service cheering us and all that. I, I don't say that to brag, okay? It's surreal when it's going on. And, and, and w one of the times, Dew goes to start videotaping it because he's standing over behind. And I'm like, no, no, no. In fact, if Rob Dew isn't at lunch or something, you bring him in here, because we tell these stories. I don't want to on tape people in trouble. And then it was just all over the place it was going on. And then I realized, oh my God, this country is in so much trouble because they know what's going on and, and, and then they listen to me and that's just confirming everything I'm saying. I, it makes me feel sick, actually. I mean, this country is, is in deep trouble. But I guess the good news here is Folks are waking up, but the public is so soft. The public is so soft, and the bourgeois establishment elite is so disconnected. I mean, can you imagine a major globalist going to one of these Kane meetings? Her vice presidential running mate, and they're meeting in, I'm not going to even say the state, and I was told I could say all this, and I'm just not even going to say it. And it's all real. I mean, this is from real people, folks. What's happening is people are getting sick and tired of this, and just we're getting more and more and more and more and more. And quite frankly, this stuff's so crazy that, and I know it's true, it's just at a certain point, it's like, really? Really? We have these people running our government that are so crazy and arrogant? that they're in front of rooms and in hangars and, and, you know, being shuffled into mansions, giggling and shooting their mouths off about how they're going to kill Donald Trump. I mean, this is just getting, to, I just can't handle it anymore. It's crazy. I, and, by, and by not handle it, I mean, I, I, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do. Talk show host is Alex Jones. He's a, he's a conspiracy theorist. Radio talk show host Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. Radio talk show host and conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. Deeply, I think, racist. I just got called racist by MSNBC. I don't want that man to have a gun. 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. The Alex Jones Show. Watch the free stream live at Infowars.com forward slash show.
My fellow InfoWarriors, I am very excited to be able to announce to you the introduction at InfoWarsLife.com of a new way to save time and money when you stock up on InfoWars Life formulations like Survival Shield X2 and Super Male Vitality. Just go to InfoWarsLife.com today, select your favorite product, click on Auto Ship before adding to cart, and choose how often you want us to send you another order. Every time you choose Auto Ship at InfoWarsLife.com, you get 10% off and you you won't have to worry about running out and having to reorder next time. And of course, you can cancel with one click anytime. As you know, I'm all about the idea of a 360 win. And the new auto ship feature at InfoWarsLife.com is a sure win for everybody. A win for liberty, a win for health, and a win when it comes to big savings. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today and save 10% on your next InfoWars Life order by selecting auto ship at checkout. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. The purpose of the SIP is to, quote, provide accurate and comprehensive information about the income and program participation that has constantly been screamed down, that you constantly called xenophobic, racist, Nazi, whatever. Well, it turns out that intuition, that instinct that you had, yeah, it's correct. When do we beat Mexico at the border? They're laughing at us, at our stupidity. And now they're beating us economically. They are not our friends. Well, black people and white people can't be unified for Trump. That's bull crap. Trump refuses to denounce the KKK. How do you feel about the recent endorsement from David Duke? Well, how do you feel about the recent endorsement from David Duke? I didn't even know he endorsed me. David Duke endorsed me? Okay. All right. I disavow. Okay? Uh, yes. Uh, all right. Yes. In the absence of the truth, bullcrap prevails. So here come the truth jokers. Look at what's been going on. All the people are coming out the dang walking dead. You know, the people who don't pay attention to politics until the election cycle comes around. And they get so emotional. They, they get all into it and, you know, they pick their sides and they fight against each other. But in reality, they ain't getting nowhere with it. So you're falling for the little racist angle. You're fighting each other. You're ripping up the signs. And, oh yeah, let me go to this. This, this is something here. How is it that this little fake joker right here comes out and endorses Donald Trump? Now, elections are all about perception. So when you see this guy endorsing Donald Trump, you can say, oh, well, Donald Trump is a racist because he's endorsing Donald Trump. But here's the thing. What is KKK? Well, the KKK was created by the Democrats. KKK still belongs to the Democrats. So this guy right here knows that if he comes out and throws his support behind Donald Trump, it's going to get the reaction of this. That's the only reason why he's coming out and doing that. Lyndon B. Johnson did the same thing in the 1964 election. He made an ad saying that Barry Goldwater was endorsed by the KKK. But how is he going to say that when the KKK is a democratic entity? They are the prop, and I'm talking about the KKK. The Democrats are the most racist party in history. The only party in American history to kill black people because they wanted them to vote Democrat. Lyndon B. Johnson said, I'll have those N-words voting Democrat for the next 200 years. When he was talking about N-words, he was talking about black people. And black people, they still vote Democrat. Neither of you don't know me. You're fucking a white male. Today, our country has lost a true American original. My friend and mentor, Robert C. Byrd. Senator Byrd was a man of surpassing eloquence and nobility. There are white I've seen a lot of white in my time. I admired his tireless advocacy for his West Virginia constituents, his fierce defense of the Constitution and the traditions of the Senate, 
and his passion for a government that improves the lives of the people it serves. There are white I've seen a lot of white in my time. They mentioned that he once had a fleeting association with a Ku Klux Klan, and what does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. He was a country boy from the hills and hollows of West Virginia. He was trying to get elected. As Secretary of State, I continue to rely on his advice and counsel. Robert C. Byrd led by the power of his example, and he made all of us who had the honor of serving as his colleagues better public servants and better citizens. Robert C. Byrd left such a legacy. We have given her $20,000 anonymously for her campaign fund. She is friends with the Klan. The KKK endorses Hillary Clinton. They're about the legal immigrants. She doesn't. She's acting like she does so she can get into office. She's a Democrat. The Klan has always been a Democratic organization. People in the streets. Does Hitler not remind you of that? Does Trump not remind you of that? No, explain to me how Trump is like Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Mass deportion. There isn't any uh, sensible approach except to do what we need to do simultaneously. You know, secure our borders with technology, personnel, uh, physical barriers if necessary in some places. And we need to have tougher employer sanctions. And we need to try to incentivize Mexico to do more. If they committed transgressions of whatever kind, they should be obviously deported. <laughs> Sessions went on to explain that Obama's immigration policy is killing wages, particularly for immigrants and minority groups because the flow of labor is so large, it floods the labor market and depresses wages. Of the Daily Caller, Donald Trump is going to do better with Hispanics and African Americans because he's talking about things that will really make their wages go up. I do not support gay marriage. I, I live in New York. Uh, New York is uh, a place with lots of gays, and I think it's great. I'd be sure to we mass abortion, not so obeying the law. Donald Trump wants to obey the laws on immigration. Donald Trump wants to vet. And basically, fuck with the one person who stands in the way of us being ruled by Donald Trump. Just, just, just before I came in here, we thought we'd do a little search in our files, and, and I do notice that a, a William Mayer uh, gave a Clinton-affiliated entity a million dollars. Uh, now, it's a, it's a William Mayer um, in LA, where that, at the time the money came, uh, perhaps you would like to comment, is that you? Yeah, yeah I don't think... For the KKK, Hillary Clinton is our choice. The future must not belong to those who slander the prophet of Islam. ISIS will be using the refugee crisis, the global refugee crisis, to place their foreign fighters on Western soil. I've known about it. We've talked about it here on The Rebel. We've talked about it elsewhere. We've also been denounced as bigots, as racist for saying such things. But ISIS has said this up front, and they've already done it in several instances. It's, but more has to be done to push back against this group that is making tens of millions of dollars per month, according to Brennan, through both taxation and black market oil supplies. That's money that will continue to fund terrorism, that will continue to fund propaganda that is used to, well, bring about sympathizers like Omar Mateen to carry out their own attacks. As I said before, this aspect of our strategy was moving too slow, but the call of the body is galvanizing the right government. So with the additional steps I over the last month, we're speeding up training of ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes in our far province. Shishan. George Bush brought the spark of jihad to Iraq, but it flared up here. Still, nowadays it was Obama 
who became the 208 information of our caliphate. This great man contributed a lot to our cause. Inshallah, thanks to you, Muslims brought down the regimes of the Mahid, who ruled not according to Sharia in many countries of Maghrib. What do you think about the mosque controversy? I think we need more mosques. Why? So we can show the world that we are not bigots. But don't you know what happens in countries where Muslims rule? I don't care. We need more hope and change. That is crazy. There are too many Christian fundamentalists trying to impose their views on us through government. What? They are trying to take over America. We need more Muslims to show the world how multicultural we are. But don't you read about what is happening in Europe because of rampant Muslim immigration? You must be a bigot. Please. Let's talk about the issues. These events are important. No. You should not be allowed to speak. You must have supported Bush. You're a hate monger. But I'm trying to have a dialogue with you about the issues. Your hate speech should be banned. But don't you know that Sharia law is being implemented in many European countries with large Muslim immigrant populations? I don't care. You're a warmonger. But in many European cities, there are now no-go zones where non-Muslims and police cannot enter. Islam is a religion of peace. We should welcome all of them. Yes, but don't you think we should carefully screen which immigrants come here from Muslim countries? No. You spread hate. I will report you for hate speech. But don't you think Muslims need to reform their religion to embrace all cultures and renounce violence among them? No, Muslim immigrants should come. We are a nation of immigrants. But aren't you aware of the human rights abuses in many Muslim countries where women don't have rights and are tortured? No. Conservative Christians oppress women's rights because they don't want women to have abortions. You must be a radical right-winger. I simply want to have a dialogue about the issues affecting the world. I'm going to call campus security and have you arrested for hate speech. No, I'm not condoning hatred towards Muslims. I'm simply addressing a global concern regarding the violence and their religion. There are many who want to destroy Israel and America. You're a fascist. <laughs>feel like every time you want to have a sensible discussion about facts and reality and trends within society, particularly when it overlaps with any kind of politics, don't you feel like any time you want to have a sensible discussion, all of these hysterical brain parasite... No, you you just say like, what are the problems in America? You can make a case because she can say something that's actually political. This guy, don't even say that. Tell me the issues in America. What are the issues in America? First off, people like me are dying. The bank's running everything. Anybody else want to get in on this? Okay. So Donald Trump Trump wants to bring jobs back to America. You say jobs are an issue. Donald Trump says he wants to bring them back. I didn't say nothing about a job. How? He quit, he quit sending jobs to China. We have companies going to Mexico. What are you talking about? Are you even listening? I said people like me are dying. American companies. You want to know why everything you pick up says made in China? That's because other companies devalue their currency, and so companies can make a greater profit overseas. Donald Trump wants to bring it back. They don't trust capitalism. This is America. Capitalism. Capitalism is cannot exist without exploitation. Didn't think so. Didn't think so. Let's bring it back to black people being killed by police. Okay. What has Trump said about that? What about white people being killed by police? Fuck off! Black people! That's not racist, though! The junior senator from Alabama went on to predict that Trump can turn the economy around for those on the lowest rung of the economic ladder very quickly.